What's up everybody, Michael here. So in this video, I want to talk about Safari in iOS 13 and go through every single new feature and change inside the Safari app in iOS 13. So iOS 13 is such a huge release that many people forget some of the smaller features and changes that Apple adds into some of the stock applications. And this is going to be an ongoing series that I'll have all throughout the summer this year, uh, talking about every application on iOS 13 and just showing you the different improvements that Apple has made to that app. In the first episode, here obviously we're talking about Safari so let's go ahead and get started but first a quick word from our sponsor. This video is sponsored by 5K Player. 5K Player is a dedicated media playback application for Mac and Windows that can play virtually any type of audio or video file. It supports more file types than QuickTime on the Mac and even includes useful tools such as a YouTube video to MP3 converter. Check them out now using the links below. Special thanks to 5K Player for sponsoring me on YouTube. So of course the first visual change when you open Safari is your favorites are now a lot bigger and they are much easier to tap. So before on iOS 12, the icons were a lot smaller, but now when you open up Safari in iOS 13, as you can see, these icons are a lot bigger and there is a show more icon at the top right there to show more of your icons. Also, if you have frequently visited websites, those will show up below your bookmarks at the bottom of the page. There is now a download manager inside of iOS 13 in Safari. So now if you click any link that has a download attached to it, it will simply bring up a new page that asks if you want to download it. Simply click on download. And as you can see, there is a new download manager page at the top right. You get kind of a cool animation once the download has finished. If you tap on that, you can see your download right here. If you click on it, it will open it up in files. Uh, this page will clear itself automatically every 24 hours. So you don't have to worry about your downloads uh, stacking up inside of Safari. And you also can clear it by clicking clear or simply by swiping and deleting it away. When uploading a photo or video file to a website in Safari, you now have the option to choose what upload size you would like to use for that file. So I'm here on imager.com. If I simply click on browse and then choose my photo library, then select my most recent photo that I've taken here. As you can see, it defaults to actual size, which is five megabytes. If I'm uploading this to a website like imager, I might not want to use the full size of the image, especially if I'm using mobile data. So if I click this, I can choose between large, medium, small, and actual size. So I'll select medium, click done. Now the upload of that photo downscale to a much smaller, more manageable size for mobile data. Now on any website in Safari, you now have a new view menu page on the top left. This appears on any website you're viewing. So if I tap on this here, the first thing we see is we now have text size options. So if we start to rescale the text size, as you can see, the menu disappears uh, just to make for more of a seamless UI. Uh, so you can see the text size a little bit better. If we click back into this, we also have hide toolbar, which makes for a more immersive browsing experience. To get out of this, all you have to do is click the top menu bar once again, and it will bring you back to the regular mode. If you go back in here, we also have request desktop site and we also have website settings. So website settings is super cool because you can now have per website privacy settings. So if I go ahead and click on this, say for example, I access a certain website a lot such as Facebook and I always want Facebook to uh, allow my location. I can simply go into per website settings when I'm on Facebook and I can choose location to always allow. That way, whenever you're on that website, you won't get a prompt asking if Safari can use your location. Instead, because we have per website settings, you can set it up so it always says yes or no to certain questions about your location or camera or microphone. If you have a whole bunch of tabs open and you start to type the name of a website that's already open, your phone will suggest that you jump to the tab that's already open instead of reloading a whole new page. So I'll show you that for example now, I'll start to type Apple and since I already have the window open, it'll recommend that I open that window instead of reloading a new page. So if I type Apple, you can see there it says switch to tab instead of loading a new page. So if I click switch to tab, it won't reload the page. It'll just bring me to that open tab that I had at the top of Safari. So this is a very useful feature that could actually save some data on your phone because you're not reloading pages constantly. And also in iOS 13, although I can't get it to work for some reason on this version of the beta, there is a feature where if you have a whole set of open windows, there actually is an option where you can save all of these pages as a single bookmark instead of saving them individually. So I haven't been able to figure out how to get this working. If you figured it out, please tell me in the comments down below because this is a very useful feature. 
All right, so that was a complete walkthrough of everything new in Safari in iOS 13. Tell me in the comments what you think of this. This is definitely becoming a more powerful version of Safari. iOS 13 is such an underrated release in my opinion. Apple has included so many little changes here and there to every single part of the OS, and this is just the start. So this is the first video, like I said, of a whole series where I'm gonna walk through every single application that received a major update in iOS 13. So stay tuned for more videos. I believe my next Next one is going to be on the Reminders app, so stay tuned for that. Turn on post notifications and also follow me on social media. You can find the links below. Once again, thanks to 5K Player for sponsoring this video. My name is Michael and I'll see you in the next video.